What's up guys, I'm going to be starting a brand new series on Demsec right now. It's going to be named Beginner Hacking. So basically what I'm going to do is cover all the, uh, well, basic things which, um, if you've never t done any kind of hacking whatsoever, you probably don't know how to do. So in this episode, we're going to be covering how to install Backtrack in a virtual machine. Yes, to those who are more intermediate, this is going to sound really mundane, but it's what some people need to know just to get started so what you're gonna do is fire up your web browser hopefully it's not internet explorer and you're gonna go over to the two websites that are gonna be in the destru uh, dest destructions yeah in the description um, the first one here is uh, virtualbox.org this is the uh, hypervisor we're gonna be used so you can run virtual machines on your computer and the next one is backtracklinux.org so first off we're gonna go to virtualbox.org, go to downloads and what we're going to do is download this one and you're going to click save file once you've done that you just go run through the installation it's just like any other installation it's just a next 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 finish um, I'll probably throw up some pop-ups anything that comes up just click on install and everything's fine there uh, then we're going to head over to backtrack Linux and then we're going to go to downloads and click download and it'll click select required version uh, we're going to click backtrack 5r2 we're going to go we're going to select gnome because it's most easiest to understand click 32 bit that's just for convenience and i know that everyone out there is going to be able to run 32 bit so that's what we're going to do we're going to go with, with that and we're going to go for a direct download then you just go click download and it'll start the download of the iso obviously i've already got both those downloaded and installed so here we've got oracle vm virtualbox which is virtualbox um and what we're going to start off by doing we've already got a virtual machine here but we're going to pretend like it's brand new we're going to go to new and uh this is going to bring up the virtual machine wizard we're going to go to next and we're going to type in a name for it what i'm going to do is call this youtube bt5 um, if it doesn't automatic, automatically select it, go to Linux and Ubuntu, because that's what the new backtrack's based off of. Go to Next, and uh, this depends on how much memory you have. So if you want to check your memory, go to Properties on your computer. It'll say 4 gig here, or whatever, how much you've got. I recommend giving it about half, because some of the stuff you might be running might be intensive. I normally go for 2800 with my 4 gig of RAM on this computer. Uh, so I'm going to put 2800 megabytes of RAM in there and we're going to want to create a startup disk because we're actually going to be installing that track so uh, we're going to leave it as a virtual box, box disk image click next uh, dynamically allocated that's just good because it won't actually take up space on your hard drive until you've actually populated the space on the virtual hard disk if it's fixed size then you'll just have as soon as you click next it'll go off and take away how it, however much storage you need um, I recommend setting it to about 20 gigs for backtrack. 8 gigs, fine if you're just doing an install and that's it. But we're going to be wanting to up, do an upgrade and everything. Get everything running uh, up to date and that. So once we've got that set to 20 gig, we're just going to cl uh, click create and create again. And create again. And we're going to have our new virtual machine. To start this up, you can either go to start or I just prefer to double click it. And it's going to open up the virtual machine because this is the first time we're running it it's actually going to give us the welcome to the first run wizard go click next and it's going to click yes, tell us to select installation media this is where we're going to click this little button here and we're going to go to our downloads and select the ISO so I'm going to click open on the ISO click next and click start and now it's going to boot from the ISO and uh, when you get this just click enter then click enter again and it's going to start loading up the installation for backtrack doesn't take all that long but i'm not going to be actually recording the full installation i'm just going to walk you through the points of how to install it and then um, we'll just watch, swip, uh, swap over to the one i've already got set up having trouble talking
by default the network interface for your virtual machine will be NAT and that's completely fine um, sometimes I'd recommend putting it to bridged well 99.9% .9 of the time I'd recommend setting it to bridged but for for what we're doing now NAT is completely fine it's only when you actually start messing about with exploits when you're actually going to need bridged so when we get to this prompt here we're just going to type start X just the letter X and click enter Now this is going to load up the uh, user interface for Backtrack, which pretty much everyone's familiar with by now. So as you can see, this is the interface for Backtrack, and they made it very easy in uh, these versions of Backtrack. I remember in early Backtrack 4, where there wasn't actually an installer that actually worked, so what you'd have to do is uh, manually copy all the files over. So we're just going to double click on the install Backtrack icon and it's going to open the installer for us okay so we're just going to leave that select as, selected as English obviously if you're preferring a different language go ahead and select that one don't think it changes the installer all that much um, Mine's automatically selected United Kingdom time, but obviously if it doesn't, just go on this list and select United Kingdom and then United Kingdom time. Forward again. And uh, this is where you select your type of keyboard. What I recommend doing is once you've got it selected, uh, just try the um, at and uh, speech marks, just because those are the ones that normally get flipped around if you do it wrong. Um, Obviously, you can see I've done that right. So we're going to click forward again. Okay, so uh, because it is a virtual machine, we can actually just erase and use entire disk, which is what we're going to do. Click forward. Obviously, if you were doing this as a dual boot or whatever, you could partition your hard drive more appropriately and install it onto a partition on there but 99% uh, of the time I just tell you to run backtrack in a virtual machine um, unless you actually start doing it all professionally then that's the only time when I actually recommend installing it on bare metal and from here you just click install and it'll run through the install it'll take about I don't know 25 minutes ish probably less when it gets to that I'll tell you to restart now so uh, what we're going to do is actually quit here but obviously you click install on that, that install and I'm actually going to load up my um, virtual machine that I already have so I'm going to shut down this one I'm just going to force power it off um, and I'm going to load up the one I've already got installed this is just to save time obviously I probably won't cut this video much just because I want you to see the full process and if I'm constantly cutting about everywhere you may be confused I don't know <laughs> okay so it'll show the backtrack splash bit splash screen for a bit and then it'll give us our login the default login for uh, backtrack is root as the username and the password is root backwards so T double R double O R even and then it'll let us log in what I recommend doing as soon as you uh, install this is type in pass WD and it'll allow you to set a new password for root so just set that to whatever you want passwords don't match but it doesn't matter but you get the idea change that password just for levels of security because personally if I saw a backtrack box on my network the first thing I'd try is logging into it with its root and tor because usually people don't change that so remember to change that then what we're going to do is just type start x which will start up the uh, user interface again So 
So once we've got Pad Track installed, what we're going to do is update it and make sure it is up to date. So what we're going to do is open this terminal here to click this button. And uh, the first command we're going to run is apt dash get update. What's this, what this is going to do is update all the packages in the repositories. Um, what a repository is is just a server with loads of packages on. So as you can see, we're just going to download all these lists essentially. This isn't actually doing any upgrading to the system, it's just giving us some lists. Okay, so now we've got the updated repositories, what we're going to do is do an app get upgrade. And this command is actually going to upgrade the operating system, so if there is any new parts, as you can see we've got 60 meg worth of updates, we're just going to hit Y there, and this is going to go off and download these. A really low speed. I'm going to go ahead and say that's their fault. What you'll notice is sometimes you'll get really, really fast speeds and sometimes you won't because I think it just randomly picks one of the mirrors. So sometimes you could be running at 700k like we are, well, less than 700k like we are here. And look, there we go, we're up to 1.2 meg there. So it just all depends on whichever repo it decides to choose. I recommend upgrade, updating Backtrack as often as possible just because um, it is up, updated very, very regularly because obviously we hackers want to have all the latest toys. <laughs> okay, so once that's done, we're going to do uh, an update for Metasploit Framework and the command for that's really easy. Um, if nothing else, remember to run that command. Um, you must run app to get up update and upgrade because if you just do an upgrade it won't actually find any new packages if you do update first then it'll find the new packages first and then the upgrade installs the new packages this can take a while to complete especially first time um, because it's gonna have a hell of a lot of packages I think this is getting towards the end now not sure if I'm honest with you. As you can tell, I haven't updated this for a couple of days, and it shows because there's a hell of a lot of updates to be done. I don't want to make this video too long because I don't actually have unlimited time on this channel and I've already gone over the time limit so I'm probably going to have to split this into two parts. This just shows I've only had um I I've I updated this like at the weekend, it just shows you how often they update backtrack. Um if I remember right, rightly, this is getting towards the end here. Usually a patch is one of the final things that gets upgraded. I may be talking about my backside there. Probably are. They've probably replaced the order or whatever. It shouldn't be too long left. It's only sixty meg of updates. I mean, the first time I updated it, I think he got more like 500, 600 meg worth of updates. So, yeah, I don't recommend um, I'd, uh, trying to upgrade this on a slow connection. Because then it's very boring. There are... The, uh, there, there are... Ah, <laughs> I can't even speak. There are alternatives to backtrack. Um but I wouldn't recommend using them uh, simply because some of them have been like known to contain viruses and stuff like that they're just they're not fun <laughs> um, there is other things that are trusted but when there's backtrack around where it's updated on daily and also 
it's why 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 try and uh, fix what isn't broken? And I think that's what a lot of these other hacking distributions are, do, are doing. Uh, they all do exactly the same thing, just with a different face. And by face, I just mean a different interface. And uh, I think Backtrack is because it's now using Ubuntu, and Ubuntu was designed to look well, look and feel a bit like Windows. Um, no, I don't want to change the Vista Basic. Yeah. But um, Ubuntu was designed to look and feel like, uh, well, look a bit, but feel a lot like Windows. So, obviously, for beginner hackers, you want to stay as much in your comfort zone as possible. Okay, that's done. Took longer than expected, but whatever. Uh, the second command we're going to run is MSF update. MSF stands for Ma Metasploit Framework, and then update is obviously just update. We're going to run that. And this is going to download the latest exploits from the uh, Metasploit SVN. SVN is the same as a repository, essentially. SVN is just a protocol, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is just a protocol for accessing it. So what this is just going to go and do is uh, down, uh, check the SVN and see if what's on my laptop is the same as what's on the server. And if it's not, it'll download the latest version from the server. I think that's the reason why SVN is a lot better than um, just downloading the files manually. Because if you download the files manually, it could you you just end up downloading the same files you've already got. SVN actually compares the two versions and downloads what whatever's missing from yours. So as we can see, we've got um, one, two, three, four, five, six more, six new exploits. So it just shows you how uh, often exploits being upgraded. So that's it, that's Backtrack installed and uh, all updated and ready to go. From here you can start with your toys and fun. Um, next tutorial is going to be about Armitage and how to use it. Sorry, I just knocked the microphone a couple of times. But next tutorial is going to be about Armitage and uh, how to use that. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.